Oh, hi, YouTubes. I didn't see you coming. So today, uh, you were with us when we made a rabbit tractor, um, but we need a way to make it mobile. So today we're going to make two wheels for it. That's four. We're going to make two wheels for it. Um, and in typical Jeremy fashion, we're going to make them out of pallet wood. Now I will be adding a little bit of Bondo to them just to make them a little more stable, see if we can get some more length of life out of them, as well as uh, we'll probably throw a little dab of paint on them. Um, but please follow through as we uh, start this project from start to finish, and I'll even give you a little example of uh, how it should work. Should being the operative word. All right. <laughs> Already gone and made up, uh, glued up a couple of pieces of pallet wood. They're eight inches, um, and each board was about four inches wide. Now each of these stacks, I've got three in each. Um, each of these stacks are separate. I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. I'll show you what I made. Um, but these will what will become the wheels. Um, and all of that is a mixture of pine and oak. I would have preferred to use just oak, um, but I didn't have quite enough material. So let me go ahead and take this apart and I'll show you what I got. <clears throat> so each of these are six pieces of wood um, and I went ahead and planed the two center pieces on both sides so that they would mate nice and tight and then I just planed the uh, inner side of each of these outer pieces um, just so that they would mate tightly as tightly as possible obviously there's some gaps here um, really not too worried about this if these fail they're just pallet wood so I'll just go ahead and make another one so um, I'm gonna go ahead and scribe this out make a circle <clears throat> and then we'll take this over to the jigsaw and uh, cut out the circle that we we end up with now I think I'm gonna make these things I did cut these to be eight inches by eight inches um, I'm just because of some overlap here I'm gonna go ahead and make these about seven and a half inch in diameter So for seven and a half inch with my compass, obviously I'm going to need, uh, was it three and three quarter, I think. So one, two, three. This compass might, I might have to make it an even seven just because my compass is too small. So we'll find a good, good spot to call middle. So I got missed most of the gaps. That's pretty good. It'll give me a big enough wheel so it'll be a little bit easier to pull this thing. We're not going to be moving it that often, so I'm not too worried about it. So there's one. And this side might be a little bit easier to mark. too. So I'll go ahead and take these over to the scroll saw, cut them out, and then I'll go ahead and just sand them up real quick. Not not too worried about um, how smooth these are going to end up being, because given the fact that these are going to be outside, they'll they'll maybe last a year. If I get a year, I'd be I'd be happy. Um, and all all in all, gluing these things up didn't take me a whole lot of time. Um, so yeah, so let's go take these over to the scroll saw. And we'll cut them out on this puppy. Make life a little bit easier on us. Not 
that that's not fun and all, but that's going to take forever. Let's step up our game to something a little bit bigger. So we've got these puppies roughly sanded up. Now I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of cracks in the wood, and given I'm not too worried about how long these things will last, but uh, if I can get a little bit more length of life out of them, I think I will. So I think what I might do is some of these some of these cracks. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead the, the joint here. Obviously, I wasn't too uh, careful about getting that exactly tight. It's a little spot right there. Most of this is actually pretty tight and glue filled up the gaps pretty well but I think what I might do is go over it real quick um, not not really worried about this one um, but I might go over it real quick with some Bondo um, just to give it a little a little added length of life um, it's one less thing I'll have to fix in the future but overall I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with the glue joint um, it's all fairly tight um, you can see a little bit of the beauty of that pine coming through but uh, yeah, I think let's fill in those gaps with some uh, some joint compound material, some uh, bundo, and uh, then we'll pop a hole in the middle. Get some, get a uh, pivot point for the. Probably end up using a bolt, I think, for the axle, quote unquote axle. So I'll probably just go ahead and put a pole on here. I think I've got some stainless steel sleeves um, or some regular steel sleeves that I can just pop in here just to give it somewhere to bear on, so the wood doesn't get torn up by the by the dowel if that's what I end up using. So uh, let me go find my Bondo and we'll get to filling these joints in and then we'll see if we can find those sleeves. too much.
hindsight, probably would have been wiser to mix this up on a separate board. Thought I was going to do myself a favor and not make a mess on something else, but probably filling cracks with un uncured and unready resin as I do this, but oops. Not like I'm trying to make a masterpiece here. I'm sorry, my uh, camera cut out in the middle of me drilling the holes for these. Um, so I ended up by, uh, finding a couple, uh, a black iron nipple, um, which you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. I think these maybe cost a couple bucks. Um, it's deep enough that I can actually get two pieces out of this one. Um, so what I'm going to do, or what I did already, um, is I used a Forstner bit, it's 7 eighths. And I believe this is a half inch nipple, I believe. Um, <clears throat> so half inch inside diameter. So the outside diameter, uh, this is a seven eighths Forstner bit. Um, so I went ahead and drilled these out. Um, and it's just a little bit loose. Um, but I think if I set it with some, I can, either, I can do it a couple different ways, but I'll get them in there, um, possibly glue them in. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these nipples down. Um, I'm sorry, my, my phone cut out in the middle of recording that. Um, most of the bondo is already dry. I might obviously let it cure a little bit longer before I really monkey with it too much as far as finishing off the surface. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get these measured up, get it cut down, and I'll uh, get them fixed in there. And this will be perfect for, since I'm going to be using a carriage bolt or a regular bolt, uh, I've got a bunch of um, galvanized bolts that'll fit perfectly inside here for this to ride on. Um, it'll just help keep the wood from wearing out prematurely. Um, and then I can cut these just a little bit wider than the quote unquote tire is that way the, uh, the bolt will actually ride against this and not against the wood, um, thereby extending the life of the tire a little bit. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead.
So what I'm going to try to do I've got a couple pieces of wood here. Um, gonna see if we can't shim this out a bit. And then I'll put the wheel out here. And slightly, just low enough so that it's not gonna stand the base off the ground too much. So obviously we don't want that, but then when we pick it up from that end, my intention is to um, have a rope connected to both sides of that. So the kids can just pick it up, um, hopefully without too much effort. Um, and then this will make contact with the ground once they pick it up. Once they set it down, the idea is that it's cantilevered out a little bit. So once they set it down, it won't lift this back end off the ground too much, which I'm not too worried about. Because um, with the mesh that we put on the, on the bottom down there, all that wire just to keep them from digging and creating burrows and digging their way out to freedom. Um, it'll actually mash the grass down. You can still see, they're still getting at it. And they're enjoying this. They're getting some sunshine. Getting to run around. When we first put them out here, they're leaping all over the place. It's pretty cute to watch. So let me get you set up and uh, I'll start drilling the holes out and getting this thing set up. the washer.
There's the finished product. in here. <laughs> <laughs> So we got the rope attached. Um, now, one thing I did notice is that when I go to pick this up, the wheels actually work too well. So when I pick this up, it just goes ahead and slides forward. I possibly might do a different version where I have like a wheelbarrow handle type setup, but we'll see how well this works and if the kids are all right with it. But it moves really freely. As you can see, I was a little concerned the wheels would be a little small. I think it should be all right. Very nice. 